Hi everybody, here we are on the Clearwater River and today I'm going to show you the basics of fishing with bobbers and jig for steelhead. Now the first thing to do when deciding uh, where to fish and how to fish with a bobber and jig is selecting the bobber. So in this case I selected a fairly small bobber because I'm not going to be fishing very far from shore and I'm actually using a fairly small bait and hence the small bobber. The next thing you need to do is think about how deep it is out there. Right now my bobber stopper, which is this little pink thing right here, is set about three feet. So in other words, if I cast out, my bobber will slip up until that point right there and stop. So I know from previous experiences this hole is about six feet deep. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this bobber stopper up to six feet. All the way up here. Now what will happen when I cast, this bobber will slide all the way up and will stop here and then I know my jig will be fishing about right near the bottom. That's where you want to fish. Most of these steelhead are just a foot off the bottom or right near it. Uh, one other thing you might want to notice about is when you're fishing with the bobber, you want it to fit, float about halfway up. That way you can detect subtle hits. And so in this case, I found that all I needed was these small weights and a jig to appropriately float my weight. So now that we have it all set up, we're ready to go. Oh, by the way, you can increase your catch rates by putting a little bit of shrimp on it. One of the nice things about bobbers is, as it starts going down the river, you can just open your bay and let line out. As long as you can see your bobber, you can keep fishing. You can fish sometimes 100 yards down the river if the flows are right. Now one of the things to watch for is that green corky in the top. If you see it sitting right on top of the bobber, that means your jig is fishing just perfectly beneath it. And notice how that bobber is floating about halfway up. That's perfect amount of weight beneath it. Now all we're waiting for is for that bobber to do uh, something different. It can be as easy as popping up, going under, shaking. Another nice thing about bobbers is if you set the depth right, you rarely hang up on the bottom. You want it to just occasionally touch the bottom, but you won't snag up much, and you can go off and all day long without losing a bait if you got your bobber set right. Oh, there's a fish! So here we are with a bigger bobber. As I indicated earlier, some of the benefits of this is we can use much more weight, so we can fish deeper if we want to. We also can catch the cast a lot farther and see strikes way out there where you can't see that with a little bobber. So. Watch just how far I can cast this bobber and how far I can see it out compared to the little one. There we are way out there and I can still clearly see the green top of the bobber. I can see the corky on top that lets me know the bobber is fishing appropriately. Just perfect. Catch a fish way across the river. And notice how I occasionally pick my line off the water. We call that kind of mending our line. That's to help uh, reduce the drag of our line in the water. Ideally what we want that bobber to do is just float down the same speed as the current. So every once in a while you need to pick your line up like this and get it off the water and that allows your bobber to just keep floating on down naturally. Then again you just can flick your bail and let the lot, your bobber keep floating way down the river. You can fish this, especially with these big bobbers, a long ways away. Then you do it all over again. <laughs> 